So today we're going to cover sprints 72 and 73. And um, <clears throat> here are our teams. Current focus is, is the same. And um, team members, I think I did see a couple new people here. Let me see if I can find them. <clears throat> Hmm. Ah, there we go. Okay, so Vlad is a new front end developer on FullyJet. Welcome, Vlad. And we also had a couple new folks on Vega, Svetlana and Anna, um, both uh, Java developers, oh, Java and JavaScript. Welcome. I think those are all the new people. Yes, okay, and so that brings us to Jakob. Are you on, Jakob? Yes, thank you, guys. All right, sure. Uh, I'll start with a uh, uh, Q3.2 uh, uh, DAISY uh, recap. Uh, original plan for DAISY was to uh, have the release ready um, and the final uh, by September 30th. Uh, but due to a couple of critical issues, the, uh, the release went out, uh, became available. Uh, two days later than originally planned on October 2nd. Um, going forwards, uh, we will make some, um, we'll be addressing critical bugs uh, in DAISY and, uh, and, and upcoming releases by making uh, individual module bug fix uh, releases available. And for DAISY specifically, um, uh, there is already a list of, uh, of uh, potentially severe bugs that will be addressed uh, through those hotfix releases. Um, the plan for DAISY is that uh, we'll continue addressing any critical issues uh, throughout uh, this quarter, uh, fourth quarter, and then additionally one month after Q4 becomes available. Uh, so that uh, implementers that are uh, using this release can still get some support before they manage to upgrade to the um, to the next release. Um, so, for the time being, that's uh, uh, the plan is to keep on doing that until January 2020, and this date can <coughs> can be changed uh, depending on uh, on the status of the Q4 release and uh, and the uptake. So uh, in Jira any tickets that uh, uh, represents critical bugs that must be uh, hotfixed uh, for uh, DAISY will be labeled as Q3.2 um, uh, 2019 hotfix. Uh, so uh, if you're interested in, uh, in, in those uh, hotfix uh, module releases, you can use this label uh, to search, um, uh, search for, uh, for, for tickets, uh, both open and closed. Um, and similarly for Q3.1, uh, we'll use uh, the label Q3.1 2019 hotfix um, to capture any hotfix, um, any, uh, any issues uh, that will be addressed as a hotfix uh, release uh, for uh, 3.1. So that was this mid-quarter release made for DAISY um, that's being actually used in production by uh, by uh, by some early implementers. Uh, so uh, 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 the, the current plan is to continue releasing patches until the end of October, um, and 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 stop and stop doing that as soon as uh, as, as the uh, implementers manage to upgrade to uh, 3.2. Uh, uh, now, um, I think that's it. Oh, uh, one additional thing, please remember, so that's for, uh, for, uh, for all developers on the project and also Scrum Masters, please remember to, uh, to pay attention to the fixed version field in Jira when closing tickets. That field uh, is generally uh, important for any, any work, including new features, but it is tremendously um, uh, important for uh, for bug fixes. That's the field that allows uh, uh, tracking uh, whether a bug fix has been uh, released, uh, which uh, version of a module it's been released 
uh, uh, n and whether you know that version has been applied to a particular deployment so it's it's crucial to to set that field and that field should uh, uh, should be set to both uh, uh, well to all uh, uh, backported versions so if a fix is applied for 3.2 uh, uh, a specific fix version for the module uh, that's applicable to 3.2 should be uh, should be uh, should be listed in the fixed version field, and and so it uh, and so it should be listed for 3.1 if 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 there was a backport release for that. So so again, please remember to uh, to to set the fixed version field whenever closing tickets. Um, all right, thanks. Kate, could you move on to the next one? Thanks. Uh, Q4 2019, uh, this plan has actually been presented during the last plan review, but the big update is that we, uh, or I, got the name wrong. Uh, the release will actually be called uh, Edelweiss, not Elderflower. Uh, uh, everything else remains the same. So the module release deadline is on, on December 4th. So by this uh, date, uh, we hope to have all initial module, initial module releases ready. Uh, so all new functionality ready by December 4th and uh, module releases uh, uh, prepared. Uh, uh, then uh, uh, after this date, we'll follow uh, with a, uh, a release testing uh, uh, period, uh, uh, the so-called backfest. Any uh, problems discovered uh, during that um, uh, 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 that week uh, will be uh, triaged and uh, addressed by uh, by individual teams, uh, and um, and uh, we expect to have a bug fix release deadline on December eighteenth. Uh, after which, uh, all modules <coughs> hopefully uh, will uh, include bug fix releases for any critical issues discovered during the uh, the bug fest uh, period. And uh, uh, the current plan is to have Edelweiss ready by December 20th. Uh, so that's the plan. Um, could, could you move yep. to the next slide, please? Yes, getting there here. There. Definition of done updates. Uh, uh, not much has changed since uh, the last print review, uh, but we do have better guidelines for uh, migrations. Uh, also, there is uh, an ongoing effort to add uh, the migration um, uh, related uh, items to the uh, PR uh, uh, review guidelines. Uh, that's actually ongoing, the current sprint, so hopefully we'll, we'll see them added soon. Uh, and the plan in general is to provide migrations for any schema changes, any, 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 any data schema changes uh, uh, between 3.2 and Q4. Uh, so that's uh, that's been already announced to the individual teams, uh, and uh, and migration scripts are part of the definition of done uh, for those individual teams. Uh, and I think that's it. As I mentioned, the PR requests uh, checklist uh, uh, is uh, getting additional um, uh, content, uh, uh, specifically addressing the migration uh, the migration uh, subject. So that's it. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks, I think, Jakob. I think that's me. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Um, okay. So as usual, we have for each team um, a slide on the sprint highlights. Um, there are things happening that are not shown in the demos, um, but we don't generally have time to go through all of these. So I am just going to click through and take us straight to the demo slide. <clears throat> Lots of teams, and here we go. Uh, okay, so, all right. It looks like Spitfire is up for the first demo with Yuri. Are you on, Yuri? Yeah. Great. Hi, all. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, so uh, for today, uh, I want to tell you uh, like our team started to implement uh, uh, the fulfillment of a request uh, that have a fulfillment preference of delivery feature. And uh, I want to show you um, the settings part of this feature. So uh, let's start from the circulation. 
So the first one is uh, related uh, to staff slips. Uh, uh, so here along with uh, halt and transit uh, staff slips uh, types, uh, uh, we added uh, requ uh, request delivery type. Uh, uh, this is basically uh, the same as another types. Uh, uh, we uh, removed uh, uh, active checkbox here because uh, it was not um, uh, like uh, it was uh, not necessary. Uh, uh, it is the same for the halt and transit part. So let's go to edit. Uh, so here, uh, uh, this staff sleep uh, is, uh, uh, here we can add uh, a description and uh, customize the text, uh, which uh, can be added uh, to uh, request delivery staff sleep, uh, which we can uh, uh, place uh, into an item, for example, a book, uh, uh, when uh, uh, request delivery, uh, was checked in. Uh, here uh, we added uh, a new set of uh, tokens uh, with uh, default values which we can add in editor field. Uh, here we can preview them. You can see an example values of them. We can click print. You can see them here. Uh, also, uh, we can uh, uh, click X. Uh, we have confirmation model. Uh, we can uh, keep editing or close without saving. We will lose our data. We can go again to request delivery. Uh, try to add some data. click save and you can see this data here. It was uh, the first thing uh, and another thing. Uh, so we added in uh, uh, tenant settings for service points. Uh, like we extended it uh, with uh, another default option uh, for uh, uh, printing. Uh, it is called request delivery. So uh, it is needed uh, to be able uh, during, like during uh, the check-in, uh, uh, we will have a model uh, where uh, we can uh, uh, set from here whether we need to print uh, uh, the staff slip uh, by default or not. Also during the work, uh, here we fixed uh, uh, like unnecessary behavior when uh, uh, we unchecked uh, uh, some of the checkboxes. Uh, uh, we uh, saw uh, like blinking of uh, the checkbox values uh, to the um, uh, default uh, values. But now you can, s I'm sorry, there is another required field. Now you can see that uh, it was saved uh, with uh, any blinking stuff. I'm sorry, I can't uh, show you uh, the previous behavior, but uh, please believe me. <laughs> um, I think basically that's it. Yeah, uh, for now there is no possibility to see like the full pass uh, uh, of this feature in action. Like here, we just can uh, uh, set some settings, uh, but uh, we can't see it uh, in action, but uh, you will see it later. Thank you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Thanks, Yuri. This looks great. You guys have made really good progress. Looking forward to seeing the rest. Thank you. All right, so, um, okay. Excellent. So um, next demo is from Thunderjet. Andrea is first, if I pronounce that right. Uh, do we have Dennis on the call? Dennis, are you on? Maybe he's muted. 
Yes, yeah, sir. I was just trying to find the mute button. I am here. <laughs> um, and yeah, I don't think we need much of an intro today. We're, we're going to show a lot of stuff from the finance module, and we're going to start with some of the work that's been done on ISBNs, bringing product IDs into orders, and then finding finding or gathering order information using those product IDs. And, and specifically, we're going to look at ISBN. Um, so with that, maybe I'll turn things over to Lexi. Mm, OK, thank you, Dennis. So uh, I'll start. Uh, I have so we'll go to for the snapshot. As you may know, uh, in inventory, we can end up with uh, such things as product identifiers uh, with uh, like uh, open uh, text form. So I created uh, some test instance and uh, I've put uh, several identifiers to show uh, different cases. Uh, we have uh, such identifier type as invalid SBN. So obviously invalid. Also, uh, I've added uh, invalid identifier, but uh, I've put identifier type ISBN. Uh, we have local identifier and uh, several ISBNs. Uh, as you may know, they can be 10 digit, 13 digit, uh, and with hyphens or without. Uh, so I believe that uh, could happen in inventory. Uh, as you may know, uh, we have uh, push sorted lines that um, based on inventory instances. So let's go to to the orders and uh, create a new one. Let's try to add PO line and uh, go to instance uh, to look on our uh, item. Uh, here we have uh, contributors and uh, product identifiers. So as uh, you can see, we imported only uh, ISBN stuff. We have like a list of uh, identifiers that uh, will be imported in uh, push sorter line. Uh, other will, will be omitted like local or invalid SBN. Uh, so user can add them manually, but uh, they will be ignored on import. Uh, so, and uh, we added uh, in acquisitions uh, a new field qualifier. So if uh, pro product ID and the type ISBN uh, contains so something with white space delimiter, we will put this in, in the qualifier field. So user can edit it, but uh, it's done on uh, importing from instance. Uh, so let's try to save. Uh, some validation will happen. We've edited that this one is not valid ISBN type. User can actually change it, something like this, and save it. Uh, on saving, uh, magic happens on the backend. Uh, so our 10 digits uh, ISBNs with hyphens will be normalized to certain digits without hyphens. Uh, so uh, we can uh, the rest of this uh, is like search. Uh, user is able to search on uh, any SBN value, even with a uh, qualifier in it. So let's go to order lines. 
here we have uh, search options like product ID ISBN and uh, he user can put this hyphenized 10 digit ISBN on search it will be also normalized and only number part and here we have our uh, preserve the line um, basically that's it for ISBN thank you uh, I'll pass more to Andre thank you Alexei I can start if you can see my screen okay I'm going to present updates that acquisitions team made uh, during two last sprints in finance up um, I think we've made significant progress so let's see that we have let's go to finance up and uh, firstly I should notice that um, now we have uh, for entities such as uh, fiscal year, ledger, group, and fund, and um, we can navigate on them and uh, we can see lists of uh, existing items. So, yes, we can see them. And by clicking uh, on one of them, we can see item details, service credit menu as well. So, let's Try and we can see details. It's a current menu, and um, during the last sprints, we added the uh, ability to create, uh, edit, and uh, delete um, items uh, from the list uh, if there are no connection uh, between uh, these uh, four entities. So, uh, if we have no connections for this fiscal year, we can edit it and uh, we can delete so we can see model confirmation and if needed we can delete and uh, fiscal year was deleted successfully so for example we can uh, delete group if there are any connections with fund um, as you can see all lists uh, have their own uh, filters and search options uh, uh, we can filter them for example for fund we can filter by group, by type, and by status. Uh, okay, there are no active, yes. Uh, and uh, by uh, ledger. The same, uh, we have uh, filters for group, ledger, and fiscal year. Uh, we can uh, the next uh, part of the presentation is to demonstrate the process of uh, creation um, transactions. And uh, for this, I prepared two to special funds uh, and uh, with budgets. We can see in fund details uh, related to current budgets, planet planet budget if any and uh, previous budgets so let's see what uh, happens when we create transactions uh, keep in mind uh, these uh, numbers allocated and available and available and uh, let's uh, go to the budget details Okay, and uh, try to allocate money into the budget, to the bu our budget uh, from uh, the first. We can allocate ten dollars and click confirm. So we can see that we allocated ten dollars, and uh, if we go to the first we can see that uh, it was uh, it was one thousand now it's less than uh, the same we can uh, we can transfer money from one to another and we can see that uh, available number was changed 
um, should mention that uh, for transfer um, the required field is to fund if we you select uh, one of them then as it's if uh, not uh, budget that belongs to our fund the from fund field uh, became become um, required let's transfer some more and uh, here we can see um, hyperlink view transactions and if you click on it uh, we will redirect it to uh, uh, transactions list for this budget. We can see the list uh, with information and uh, if we click on the item we can see details that we have and um, we can uh, filter them by type for example. So we can see one allocation and one some transfer. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, that's all from my side. And if you have any question, feel free to ask. Thanks, that looks great. There's a question in chat from Mike McKinnon. Um, he asks, in funds for previous budget, is there a limit to the amount of historical budgets tracked there? I'm thinking of libraries will want to see a few years worth of budget history. Yeah, there isn't there isn't a limit on the number of previous budgets that will display there. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, it's a um, common um, multi-column list, so we can uh, manage this uh, count. I think. Okay. Any other questions? All right, great. Yeah, it looks like you guys have made a ton of progress. Thanks, Andre. Thank you. Uh, okay, so next we have Vega with Alexander. Alexander, are you on? From Vega? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear oh, you. Hi, everyone. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, today I want to show you add permission redesign. Uh, so uh, previous pop-up was changed to a uh, model with a search and sort and multi-column list components. Currently it's uh, available for user edit and permission sets, edit and create pages. So basically there are um, all permissions with a visible flag, uh, which we can sort by name, uh, type, and status and filter by assignment status uh, and uh, permission types. I want to mention that permissions are, uh, permission sets are created by, you, by user and uh, just permissions are created by, um, by system. Also we can search uh, permissions uh, by display name and we can assign and unassign permissions uh, um, <clears throat> uh, all of them. So basically that's it. Let's proceed with uh, saving. Uh, also saving of permissions was fixed recently and now we assign permissions all at once and previously we was saving them by one by one. Um, also, I want to mention that your calendar module was updated and currently we are using a newer version of React Big Calendar. Probably that's all from my side. If you have any questions, please contact me. All right, awesome. Thanks, Alexander. But I love that new uh, permission assignment feature. It saved me a ton of time already. Thank you. Okay, um, so next we have uh, FullyJet, starting with Taras. Or Igor, whoever wants to go first. FullyJet, you guys on? Let me start. Uh, can you see my screen? Not yet. 
There we go. What about now? Yes. Okay, so uh, it's not much to um, demo or talk about uh, from the UI side. We have uh, all the vers most versatile features still in development. It will be, I will be demo them in the next sprint, but uh, today we have something to show you. Uh, it is a, a complete version of uh, uh, record selector component for match profiles. So as you can see, uh, we have a match profile form. So if we will uh, click edit, we will um, be presented with uh, uh, the sc screen of th this component to select uh, possible incoming records, uh, which uh, in, into which we will be imported data. Uh, and we can choose uh, any type of this record to to import, uh, and then uh, it will show you the uh, incoming record of uh, now it is only mark, so we cannot uh, click uh, mark bibliographic and uh, select another type of record. But it will be done in the future when we will uh, have more um, incoming record types to uh, to process. But you can uh, um, change your your mind and your decision on what exists in record to uh, uh, to compare with. So uh, that's all for um, that's all for match profiles now. And also we have uh, completed uh, action profiles uh, details in the form. So as you can see um, now, you can. Uh, select uh, on which uh, action you will uh, react to on matches uh, or on, on non matches. So, non matches is now by default. So, uh, you can choose from four record, uh, four, uh, four action types. Uh, let me uh, let me select. Mark uh, record types to yeah to show you the full list. Uh, those lists are uh, mutual filtered. So if you will uh, select any other um, uh, aside uh, much uh, aside mark records, uh, we will um, uh, we will um, modify absent. Uh, we will have modify absent because modify action is. Uh, available for uh, mark records record types only so uh, also um, we can uh, create a combine which is uh, unavailable for orders and then you will not see the orders in in the record types list so now you can save this and uh, it is already connected to uh, backend so you can change the Action, uh, action profile details there. I will not do this, but uh, to not to spoil the data, but uh, you can believe me, uh, it works now. So that's all from my side uh, for today. Uh, it's not much, but uh, you can ask me if you have any questions. Thanks. I think that looks great to us. Okay, so I guess we're ready then to hand over to Igor. Are you looking for the stop share? Yeah, there you go. Yes. Uh I'm just going to share my screen. Just uh, tell me which one uh, screen do you see with cat or with postman? With the cat. Okay, it's not mine, it's just a random picture. <laughs> Sorry, Kate. Uh, all right, so uh, for the last period of time, uh, backend work was concentrated on ability to enable uh, users to edit mapping rules using command line tools. Uh, just because previously data import had default hard-coded rules for mapping 
for mark to instance mapping and those rules were common for all the tenants. And now rules are tenant specific. Every tenant has own mapping rules and data import provides uh, API to, to edit these rules. Uh, so let's have a bit practice. And just before demo, I have imported a file with mark records that uh, created a chunk of instances. So let's let's quickly check instances uh, just to make sure mapping default mapping works. My favorite instance is uh, Cornell University graduate school records. Uh, so as you can see, all the fields are non-empty. All the fields are filled in. That's because of use uh, default mapping. And now I can open my Postman and uh, edit mapping. Uh, for example, for index title, this is not required field. And I can uh, remove mapping for this field for index title at all. And then we can see how does uh, mapping works. So first of all, I have to get all and just uh, find 245 field. This field is responsible for title, for resource title and for index title. Uh, this shouldn't touch resource title just because of this is uh, required field. We just remove mapping for index title. Just remove it and update rules. All right, let's uh, try to import another one file and see our result instances. I click load mark bibliographic records and file uh, has been imported. So I can go to inventory and as a result, we have two instances. The first one, this is which one I have imported before demo uh, with default mapping. So index title is not uh, empty here. And uh, this is the new instance we just recently uh, got and index title is empty here. That's because of uh, an ability to edit mapping rules. Of course, if user wants to restore rules, I mean the current state of uh, his rules to default state, uh, we provide this ability as well. So, roughly saying that's all about me. Thank you. Thanks, Igor. Any questions? All right. Okay, so um, then Concord is next uh, with Vladimir. Uh, <clears throat> yes, hello everyone. Hello. Um, could you see? Me, uh, can you see, see my screen? Yes, we can. So, uh, I want to demonstrate you two things. Uh, the first one. Uh, is about uh, uh, do not uh, anonymizing loans with uh, pfinds. So uh, uh, you can see that we have a specific user with uh, pfinds, and we can see uh, that uh, the first uh, item has uh, paid fully uh, action. Fifine and the second Fifine is about uh, only uh, existing Fifine. So, if uh, and uh, moreover, we can see that uh, he has uh, two more uh, items. So, if we uh, click anonymize all ones, we can see that two ones had uh, associated Fifines and could not be anonymized. So, uh, if we update this page, we can see that uh, those two uh, 
ones were uh, anonymized, but ones uh, with fines uh, uh, are existing uh, to this user. So uh, this was the first one, and now I want to demonstrate you the second one. So, the second one is about circulation rules editor, uh, about conf uh, applying rules for institution, campuses, and libraries. So, you can see that uh, this uh, institution related and uh, connected to this, for example, this uh, location. So, let's uh, input uh, rule with uh, code with this uh, institution and uh, specify, for example, uh, this policy, one hour. Uh, then let's go and uh, see that we have uh, an item with a specific effective location, or main library, as you can see over here. Uh, let's input it and uh, check out for a uh, random user. So you can see that uh, one policy was applied as one hour as we uh, input it to uh, circulation rules editor. So uh, that's all from my side. Uh, Evgeny, could you please proceed with your task? Thank you for your attention. Hi everyone, I would like to share my screen and inform you about updates in the circulation rules editor. Uh, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, let's do it. Uh, the filter input field was added to the location uh, menu. So now users can uh, find and select needed locations quickly. For example, uh, as you can see, uh, the location code uh, contains a full hierarchical uh, path and the codes are separated by the special symbol uh, greater uh, than. As, uh, this solution uh, was applied for libraries, campuses, and locations to fix some replacement issues and makes our codes more informative for, for the users. Also, Concord's uh, team provided uh, supporting of a special item, uh, any, for the intermediate menus. This items is this item is used to show all childs uh, of the listed of the li of the listed items. For example, uh, there is a one library uh, in the first campus, and there is only one uh, library in the second campus. And if I select uh, the any volume, the menu will show uh, two libraries. Uh, that's all from my side. Thanks. Thanks. It's really exciting to see that coming together. Nice work, guys. Um, okay, uh, Core Functional is next. Matt Connolly is up first. Hi, everyone. Um, let me get my screen share here. Ah, sorry, just one second. Okay, is that visible now? Hello? Yes, it is, yep. Okay, great. Sorry, I was on a new computer here. Um, Okay, so I've got two small issues to show today. And uh, this one is something that Michal worked on. Um, so you might have noticed in the earlier demos an updated search and filter menu on this side here. Um, 
I'm looking specifically in inventory now, and this is uh, what it used to look like. This is from the Clover release. And for, uh, by comparison, this is the most current release. So uh, what Michael's done in this issue basically is to clean up a lot of, uh, a lot of these filters here. So we have uh, resource type and language now below location, and they've been collapsed by default. And then we have location uh, pushed up to the top. And resource type looks pretty much the same when you expand it. Um, language, though, is different. So we have an updated language menu here uh, with a search box and then a list of languages uh, beneath that. And we can search, but at the moment, there are only a few languages in here, so it doesn't help much. But uh, there are plans afoot to um, expand this out to include a much longer list of languages uh, comparable to what you see when you um, create a record in inventory and assign languages to that. Uh, and so let me just go in now and uh, find an item here. So we're moving on now to the uh, next item to show off. And so if I go into a record and edit that now, down here we've added nature of content fields. So I can uh, add a field here and it works pretty much as, as you'd expect. Um, there's a list of content types here, which is populated on the back end. And so in this case, this is Harpo Marx's autobiography. So I'm gonna select autobiography there. And this is a repeatable field. So I can add more such things. And just for fun, let's say it's also a comic book. That would be kind of neat. Um, and then if I save that and we scroll down a bit here, yeah, we've got nature of content listed. It's kind of crammed in on the end of this row here. So there are also, uh, there's an issue out to update this and I think move it down so it's a little clearer and easier to read. Um, but that's uh, nature of content and I think that's it for me. Cool, thanks Matt. All right, so I was also gonna demo something for core functional for the backend guys. Um, Okay, so uh, we've been wiring up some um, loan rule settings that have been in the loan policies for quite some time, but just haven't been effective. Um, so I created a couple of loan policies for this demo, this 90 standard 21 held 14 recalled and the quarterly fixed due date schedule. Um, the quarterly one will apply to material type DVD and the 90 day one will apply to material type book. And just to show you what those look like real quick. This is a rolling loan. <clears throat> and um, it gets, it's, the standard loan period is 90 days. It is renewable. It's actually not so relevant here. Um, what's relevant um, here is that um, there is an alternate loan period at checkout if there is an active pending hold request. So if there's a hold sort of behind this or in the queue when you check this out, um, then instead of the 90 days, it'll get 21. Um, and there are some other settings. Um, this one will be showing you in the next demo, the alternate loan period at renewal for items with an active pending hold request. The other thing to note here that I will show you today is um, the allow renewal of items with active pending hold requests. So right now this policy is set up to allow renewals. Even if there's a pending hold request, you can still renew. All right, so that's that one. And then, <clears throat> sorry, the fixed due date schedule. This is a fixed uh, profile loan policy and it's set up um, with a quarter fixed due date schedule. And I think it's basically any loans that are created between September 1st and October 31st get like a November 8th um, due date. That's sort of the fixed due date schedule. And there is here alternate loan period at checkout for items with active pending hold request is 21 days um, and the is not allowing renewals when there's an active pending hold request. So if I go to inventory and I grab a book here, I'm going to just copy the barcode and check it out. You will see that it gets 90 days. Uh, it should get 90 days. Uh, it doesn't get 90 days, why? 
Uh, I'm oh, sorry, but it hour. looks like Volodymyr updated uh, oh, the okay. data during his demo. <laughs> All right, let me check again. Um, hmm, but why would it? Here, let me take this out. Yeah, let's try it now. Uh, okay, so back here, we'll check it in and try it again. All right, see if we can get it the right loan policy. There we go. All right, so it got 90 days because there were no holds on it. So the due date is in January. So now I'm gonna check it in and I'm just gonna create some holds for this item. <clears throat> the first one I'll make a page. It has to be a page actually because it's an available item. The second one will be a hold. So I'm just duplicating and then I'll change the requester. All right, so now there's a queue on this. The first person in the queue is uh, Vito. This is a known issue actually, let me go back. There we go. Um, yeah, so Vito Koss is first in the queue and then there's a hold request. Um, also in the queue. So when I check this item out to veto this time, it should get that 21 day period instead. And it does. Um, and the other thing is because this um, policy allowed renewals when there was an active pending hold request, if I come in here um, to the loan details and I try to renew it, um, it should renew successfully. So renewals were allowed. All right, so now let's try the fixed due date schedule. And I'm gonna take now a DVD and I will check it out. So there are no holds on this. So this should get the November 8th or November 7th uh, due date. This is according to the fixed due date schedule. Um, I'll check it in again, and then I'll create a couple of requests. <clears throat> this one is a page because it's available. And then I'll duplicate it. The second one is a hold to change the requester, create the request. And now if I try to check this item out, I should get an abbreviated uh, loan. So yeah, so it gets um, the 21 day uh, period instead of the fixed due date schedule. And because this one, this one was not so allowing um, renewals. So I'm gonna just hop over to the loan details page and I'm attempt a renewal there. <clears throat> and it should disallow it. Item not renewed, items with this loan policy cannot be renewed when there's an active pending hold request. So yeah, so that's, that's it. it there's actually, it's quite involved um, making these things effective. And there was a lot of work that went into this. Um, Jason, Jeremy, and Bodon um, did the work for this. So just showing off their good work. Any questions? All right, I'm gonna stop sharing and see who's next. Um, actually, it looks like those were all of the demos. And um, I don't know if Anton was able to join. He was possibly not going to make it. Uh, Anton, are you on by any chance? All right, looks like he wasn't able to join us this time, um, family emergency. So, uh, okay, well then I think we might actually end early for once. Let me just um, share my screen once more, show you what we have in the rest of the slide deck. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> uh, 
Foley Jet folks, did you guys want to talk about the slides related to the CLI editor? Or are these just in here for reference? I'm going to assume they're just in here for reference. <laughs> so also, if you're interested in, in the QA update, the slides are in. Um, so you can come in and take a look at uh, how we're doing and um, get the links to all the dashboards. And then we've got 74 and 75 coming up. Um, both of them are two week sprints. So we'll meet again in about a month. And we have slides for all of the teams again, per usual with the plans for the coming sprints, if you'd like to take a look at those. And I will, um, we will upload this recording to YouTube and share the link along with that uh, shortly. Any questions? Comments? All right, cool. I guess it was a short one this time. Thanks so much, everybody.